Good morning. And here we are again this morning. I want to culminate the message that we had for like the last uh, three times I was here. This is the fourth time. This is part four of why I want to share to all of us about God and government. And remember how we started up, like if we talk about God in heaven and government here on earth where we are all part of. We talk first about prayer because like I said, government is what God gave us as human beings to help run the earth. But government is not just here to put order. Government is about leadership. And foremost, when you talk about leadership, leadership is not about position. Leadership is about service. And let me again remind all of us the statement Jesus said, that he, Jesus, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And so when we talk about God and government, we started up by saying this too connects. Why? Because as God rules over all of our lives, from start to end of history, from the beginning of the day we were born to the day God will take us back into eternity, He was saying, I gave you the earth, and you make sure to put my word, my order, my will, my heart on planet earth. So we started talking about God and government. Remember the first two weeks, it doesn't start or you cannot talk about God in heaven in the governance of man, whether it's us serving one another or us as a people, particularly of this country, serving our government and government serving us because we are one nation. Then we started with prayer, right? So the first two weeks we talk about the importance of prayer. So we dissected the Lord's Prayer, our Father. First week, and then second week. The third week, we talk about a challenge, now or never. That we remember last week, when we said, unless the Lord builds the house, unless the Lord guards over the city. We talk about the house as a family, and a city is actually a nation. This morning, we'll talk about the fourth installment of that, and I entitled it Inside Out. But before we do, let's just start our great Sunday today with this verse from Isaiah chapter 66, verses 8 and 9. And as I read, it says here, Who has ever heard of such things? Who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day, or a nation, be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. Verse 9, do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Do I close up the womb when I bring to delivery? Says your God. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Give us your heart. Again, give us your eyes. Give us your mind. That truly, Lord, we will more than hear what you were saying, that we could apply your powerful word into our lives so that we'll be able to do so and serve others. Thank you so much. We give you praise. We give you praise in Jesus. This is a great verse to start with we realize isaiah 66 that's the very last chapter of the book of isaiah after 66 long chapters here is god telling israel what will happen not only for that moment but also from where they have walked or gone through so we talk about this ito yung Sinabi ng Diyos, di ba? Wow, what a challenge. And we ask one another, can a country or a nation be born in a day? Wow, pwede ba yun? Nangyayari ba yun? Before we pursue this, 
Let's look at Acts 1 6. Remember the last time I shared about this and the disciples gather around Jesus, the day Jesus resurrected and show them the way and he was taken up to heaven. Remember this question? In verse 6, they said, Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? That's an excellent question. It's a question of inquiry because in the heart of Jews, they know for sure that when the Messiah comes, the pagdating ng Messiah, he will come to lead them. He will come to rule them like a king and free them from the oppressors. And it's a legitimate question knowing that they've been through a lot of empires. Remember, they went through against the bigger ones, right? Nakalaban nila yung mga Assyrians. The Bukadnesar, the Babylonian king, marched into Jerusalem and destroyed it. Afterwards, right, the Persian king's rule and the mga hinakotapuntang Babylon was allowed to go back. That was what I was speaking last time, last week. And then after them, after the Greeks, after the uh, Persians came the Greeks. Alexander the Great. So isipin natin, wow. The great Assyrian kings came. Then the great Persian kings came. Then the Greeks came, represented foremost by Alexander the Great. And after his empires done, came the mighty Roman Empire. And this is really the setting of this question because Jesus came into the world at the time of Romans. Panahon ng mga Romano. And it's a legitimate question. They were asking not just a kingdom, but a country, a nation. Panahon na ba, Lord, na ibalik mo kami sa kinalagyan namin? And sometimes we ask that question, Lord, we're a nation, but have we really, really come to a point where we could really go up there and be the nation you promised we will be? And this is the same question Lahat tayo, tinatanong natin, Lord, may bansa kami. Binigyan mo kami ng bansang ito. Pero kailan ba talaga darating yung mga pinangako mo? Because, like I said, hindi tayo nagkulang, hindi lang sa paalala, kundi sa mga prophecies. A lot of prophecies were spoken to this country. And sometimes in the midst of this great situation we have here in COVID pandemic times, we go back Tinatanong natin si God, Lord, magkakatotoo pa ba yun? Darating pa ba yun? I mean, so many of your people came here. Men of God, women of God, prophesying. There are things that they've said long ago na nagkatotoo. But when will this country rise up to be the kind of country you call these Philippines to become? And that's exactly the same as what these people were asking. But likewise, sabi ni Jesus, ang sagot doon, hindi pagbabago ng gobyerno, kundi pagbabago ng bawat isa. And that's what I've been saying from the start of our series in God and government. Bakit? Because we realize, Lord, if you really rule over us, then we will know that there will be so much change deep within us. Isip salita gawa. And that change will truly allow us to be governed first within. And then we will be able to govern outside to make this nation what you promised this nation to be. Let me go to my two points, the two statements. Ito yung una, yung sinabi ni Lord sa binasa natin. Can a country be born in a day? Or a nation be brought forth in a moment. Wow. Can a country really be born in a day? Can a nation be brought forth in a moment? We look at this, we realize, Lord, these are statements coming from you because you're asking us, mga tao. You're asking us literally. And as we open our hearts and our minds this morning, you see it in Moto. Lord, this is a question na dapat in our hearts, personally sa bawat isa natin, masagot natin. Because hamon to, this is a challenge 
for everyone to really come to think about, come to really ponder upon. Can a country, can a nation be born in a day? Can it be brought forth in a moment? Split second, andun. You realize that God really wanted us to be here, not only to live, but to rule the earth. Kaya nga yung nasabi ni God kay, kay Adam, di ba? Sabi niya, Adam, ito yung primary mission mo. Subdue the earth, rule. Over the animal kingdom, over whatever was there. But there's one thing that God really wanted Adam to do. And that is to lead his family. To lead human beings into the knowledge, into the worship, into the relationship with God. Because yun ang gusto niyang sabihin sa naunang tao. So after Adam came so many thousands of years, and God had to close that kind of history through Noah and family. Kaya nung sinara niya yan, only eight people, one family came out of the earth. And humanity again rebooted to start. So pag inisip natin, yes, we all came from Adam. We all know that. Every other research and histories that we have in every culture points out to a single parent. Meron talaga tayong magulang, nanay at tatay. But the flood of Noah, also known in every other culture, whether that's Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian, Egyptian, Assyrian, Hittite, whatever kingdom meron ng unang panahon, o mga empires, the same story was told. That God judged the world and a family came out. But mahalaga to kasi we've always been talking about the importance not just of man and woman but why God created families, human beings not only to populate the earth but to enjoy this big planet for the glory of God. Can a nation be born in a day? After Noah, hundreds even perhaps more than a thousand years passed came Abraham. What's so special with Abraham? In Abraham's time, there was also population explosion. In Abraham's time, the greatest of the peoples that came there, okay, may mga Elamites, diba? may mga Akkadians, and then the Sumerians. See, Abraham and his family came from the Sumerian side of empires. And in fact, one of the greatest Sumerian cities where he came from was Ur. And out of Ur came Abraham. God called Abraham to come out. Sabi niya, leave your family, leave your country, be with me. Why? Because after all this time, after Adam, after so many of those four fathers that we have, after Noah, after Noah's son, after so many other people na pinakalat na ni God, no? nung ayaw nilang kumalat from Babel, kinalat sila came a lot of people, one of them was Abraham from Ur. He came out of there because God wanted to mark down and tell the earth that he wanted to start his own people. And as we listen to this, we are children of Abraham. We are part of the his people ni God. Bakit mahalaga yun? Because si God, aminado siya, kinreate niya lahat ng tao sa mundo. Pero hindi lahat ng kinreate niya tatratuhin o tatawagin niyang mga anak. Kaya nga ang tawag doon, sons of God. Hindi lang exclusivity yun. Because si God, alam niya kung sino yung nagmahal sa kanya at magmamahal sa kanya. When I say this, mahal ni God kahit sino. Dahil kinreate niya yan. But out of Abraham, he created this thing. He wanted his people. And he promised Abraham so much. Sabi niya, Abraham, out of you will come peoples and you will bless nations. Why? Your family will do that. Sa so, pag-inisip natin, the journey of Abraham from Ur to Canaan is a journey of faith. That's no easy way. Because when you realize that you are in one of the most advanced civilizations of the earth and God, that voice, you do not see but only hear, guides you out of your comfort zone. You know what? This COVID thing, na-check out tayo kasi actually, di ba? 
comfort zone natin sa buhay, grabe. Ayo natin lumabas kasi gusto natin yung kabisado natin, yung kaya nating makalculate. Kahit sino sa atin ayaw natin ng ng, ng nangyayari eh. Pag inisip natin, gusto natin na nakaraan kasi kabisado natin yun, the way we live. The way what we have things. Alam na alam mo eh. You know it like the back of your hand. Alam na alam mo, kabisado mo. But here comes this. Abraham was challenged by God. Will you trust me? I'll take you out on a journey of faith into a place where I can start with you, a people. And indeed, after Abraham came a son, Isaac, after Isaac came Esau and Jacob, God chose Jacob. And I realized well, he used a lot of things. You know, when God begins to move us out, he used a lot of things. It can be nature. May famine, floods, or what have you. It can be man-made, war. Nagtaguli yung mga tao. Or it can be things like this, the pandemic. God would use pestilence. All this to move us around. And in came Jacob. Not a perfect man that he is. But God, looking at Jacob, realized, I can start with this. You know when God looks at us? He doesn't need perfect people. He wants people who will ultimately submit to it. Sabi niya, sunod ka lang sa akin. You know, most of us would say, kailangan perfect. Ako alam, marami ako alam sa Bible. Kailangan, hindi, kailangan mo lang makinig. Kailangan mo lang sumuno. Of course, mahalagang may alam ka. Pero lahat ng alam natin will not lead us anywhere pag dito ay marunong sumuno. And here comes Jacob. You know, the funny thing is, there was Famine in the land. In that world. Hindi lang doon sa Kainan. The whole world went into something. Yung nangyayari sa atin ngayon na pandemic global, yung mga ginagawa ng Diyos noong unang panahon, global din yun. Kung yung flood global, ito, one of the rarest moments sa earth na nag-dry up. I don't know what happened to the earth back then, but there was famine in all the world. And you know what? Jacob moved. Realizing that one of his sons is still alive, si Joseph, who became second to Pharaoh. If not, siya na yung de facto na paro, leader ng Egypt. So what happened there? Out of thankfulness, Pharaoh asked Joseph to let his family in Egypt. Invited J uh, the, Joseph's family, Jacob and his children, his family. To live in Egypt, in the region of Goshen. So, we have that in your Bible. You realize that Jacob, with all his family and men, they only numbered 70 people. 70 people, a family of 70 people entered and lived in Egypt out of Pharaoh's invitation. They were given a special place. And you realize what happened after that? 400 years passed just as when God was creating a covenant, an agreement with Abraham. Sinabi niya na yun eh, your descendants will live in a faraway land for 400 years. And it happened just as God said. So ito ngayon, 400 years later, what happened was, a family of 70 came out after 400 years. And they're not small in number. That's 2 million plus people who walked out of slavery, who walked out of bondage, who walk into freedom. Pag inisip mo, wow, sa gitna nun, yeah, they started with that, welcomed, embraced. But you know, after 400 years, the dynasties of leadership in Egypt changed hands and in favor na wala until they realized, oops, we have numerous numbers of people, including Jews, living in our land. Let's make them slaves. Let's build something for us. Let's build Great monuments that includes pyramids and free labor. They made Jews into slaves. So they went out there two million strong. Pag inisip natin, well, similarly, di ba, kinocompare ko minsan yung buhay natin at ng mga bansa. This time, mas magandang i-compare din kahit papano natin. You know what? Sila, yung mga Israelites, tsaka tayo. May mga similar story tayo. You know, Nation was born. 
a nation was born. Kaya nga ito yung sabi ni, 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 ni Kanong ni Lord eh. Can a nation be born in a day? The day they walked out of Egypt. The day Moses led them into the Red Sea when God had to divide the Red Sea and let them cross over. That is the day a nation was born. Pag inisip mo, paano nangyari yun? Si Abraham, tinangakuhan siya, magkakaroon ka ng anak. Pero one day, soon, after thousands of years, you will be the father of nations. Pag inisip mo sa isang taong, hindi naman taga dun, dinala ka from civilization to nowhere, it takes great faith. You know what? In our time today, if we may have faith, ask God, Lord, give me great faith. I too, I too, tayo. I too am a child of Abraham. You've given him great faith. He had shown you great faith. Teach me faith, Lord. Teach me to pray. Teach me to believe you. And I always tell my son, I there are principles that I believe in my life, but this is one principle I always tell people about life. I said, personally, sabi ko, you know what? My mission, my job is to obey God. God's job is to provide. All my life, as a family, in my family. Ako si Oline, si John Mark, and natitira kong mahal na nanay dyan, 91 years old. That's where I, we are. We traveled. Through time, believing only this thing. Lord, our job is to obey. Take us where you want us. Your job is to provide because kahit kailan, hindi mo kami iiwan. Never will you lead nor forsake us. And that, my friend, is simple faith. Just believing God. Taking God at His word. Nangako ka eh. Eh di susunod ako. Bakit? Eh hindi naman tao yun lang ako. Ikaw. Ikaw God. Ang nangako. Eh sa iba nga, nagtitiwala ako sa iyo pa. Nagtitiwala tayo kahit kami. But believe me, tao lang yung pinagkatiwalaan natin eh. Have you tried really trusting God, believing God, having faith, faith, a simple walk? That's what Abraham did. He went into a journey. He was promised a son. When there almost been nothing there, 100 years old siya, 99 si Sarah, wala pang anak. He believed it will be. Kasi when nakita si Jacob, 70 came into Egypt, 2 million came out. No longer as slaves, but freed men and women. Pag inisip na natin, Lord, similarly, ganun din kami. Israel was born the day they came out of Egypt, the day they stepped into the Red Sea, the day they landed on the other shore. Nung nahati yung dadat na yun. Similarly for us, we're just scattered tribe. Nung unang panahon, 7,100 islands, kanya-kanyang komunidad yung mga tribes. You know, accidentally, we've been discovered by Fernando Magallanes, or in English, Ferdinand Magellan. He gave us a name in honor of the Spanish king, Filipinas. That was the day this nation was born. Can a nation be born in a day? Long ago, di naman nation yung Filipinas. Eh. Scattered tribe yun na hindi magkakilala. But that day, by the words of a foreigner, he named this island a nation. Filipinas. Wow. And lagi natin sinasabi, but powerful ang Philippines in terms of witnessing? Because hindi lang yung hari ng Spain yun. His name was after one of the great men of the Bible, Philip, the great evangelist. We are witnesses to the world, guys. How we live our life. Like I said last time, we claim to be the only Christian nation in Asia. And that's true. The challenge ko lang, by faith, Let's live. Let's live the claim. Let's live the pronouncement that we are a Christian nation. Yung buhay natin is a testimony to the whole world, to our neighbors here in Asia. You realize it's not easy, right? From Magellan to the day they brought down the American flag in 1946. That was 1521, March 16, 1521, and July 4, 1946. Parehas halos, 400 plus years. 
Kung 400 sila doon sa Egypt, 400 years from Magellan, to the day the American flag was lowered in Quirino Grand's town. And out came, officially, the Republic of the Philippines. Ito ko sinasabi, God and government. Diyos sa langit eh. Tinawag tayo mga tao, it was a foreigner. Ferdinand Magellan, who called this country, this group of islands, Filipinas, Islas, Philippines, the island of the Philippines, a nation. And finally, we are a people recognized officially by the world. Republic of the Philippines. 1946, July the 4th. Do you think it's an ordinary journey? <laughs> Can a nation be born in a day? And yet, that day, we were born. Ang maganda sa atin, ipetsa tayo. We were considered a country when we were given a name. March 16, 15, 21. We were officially a nation in 1946. Recognized by every country on earth. Guys, lagi natin sinasabi, mahal natin yung Pilipinas. Mahal nga ba natin? Walang makakatulong sa atin kundi tayo-tayo muna. Madalas umaasa tayo sa labas eh. Madalas tinitina natin yung mga kaibigan, kaalyado natin. Ilang best na ba tayong iniwan? Pag di natin iningatan yung isa't isa, may hirapan tayo kasi pag umaasa ka na lang sa kanila. Normally yung mga yan, yan ang hirap sa geopolitics eh. Pag convenient sa mga kaalyado nating bansa, okay. Pag hindi na convenient, ilalaglag ka na lang. Ilang best na ba tayo nilaglag? Kaya maingat tayo. Kaya dapat yung gobyerno natin matalino, marunong bumalanse. Because, na totoo lang, ang totoong foreign policy ng mga bansa, selfish yan. Dapat tingnan mo yung sarili mo, before mo tingnan yung kapitbahay. Tama naman, di ba? You cannot love others unless you love yourself. Kaya nga sabi ko, Pilipinas, mahalin natin sarili natin. Huwag natin tingnan, tulad ng tinrain tayo ng mga foreigner na sabihin, sabi nga last time, third world tayo. Tino mo nga kung third world tayo, pumunta ka ng Ayala. Pumunta ka ng Alabang. No? Pumunta ka ng Global City. Pumunta ka ng Ortigas. Pumunta ka ng parts ng Metro Manila, even yung, yung Ross Boulevard. Pumunta ka ng MOA. Pumunta ka sa pinaplano ng mga tao ngayon. Pumunta ka rin sa Cebu. Or else, pumunta kayo sa Davao. Walang third world na ganito eh. Yet, pinaniwala tayo. Tama na yun. Pagtiwala tayo sa Diyos. No matter how people molded us to think bad about ourselves. Kaya nga sabi ko last time, ang sama lang tingin ng mga Pilipino sa sarili pag uwi sa bahay. Please, baguhin na natin. Kung Kristiyano tayong bansa, pakita natin. Una, self-government, irespeto natin sarili natin. Kasi pag hindi natin matutok irespeto sarili natin, don't expect others to respect us. Don't expect others to respect you when you don't have self-respect. You know what self-government is? It's not being selfish. It's loving God, loving yourself the right way so you can love others. And when you love yourself, you will respect yourself. Titinan mo ng tama sarili mo. We go here, pag-inisip natin, wow, can a nation be born in a day? Second statement, two, two statements. Statement number two, do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord. Do I close up the womb when I bring to delivery, says your God? Tanong ni God dyan. Ah, diba? Sabi niya, iaalaw ko ba yung time ng panganganak pero hindi ko i-deliver yung bata? Sinasara ko ba yung womb kapag time ng manganak? Diba? Diba? Pag time ng mga anak, bilib na yung full term, ha? nine months, whether you like it or not, di mo pwede sabihan yung bata, pwede ba baby another month mo na ten months ka na lumabat? Hindi, yung panganganak, alam na mga nanay ito, pag time na ng panganganak, lalabas talaga yung baby. Bakit? Alam mo tong COVID na to reboot to eh, di ba sabi ko, yung old white skin, yung old dati, tapos na yun. Tapos na yun. Naalala ko yung sinabi ni Pastor Dave, nag-meeting kami kahapon. No? Sabi nga ni Pastor Dave, minabanggit siya. Sabi niya, you know what? The new normal is abnormal. Iisip mo. O nga, no? Because 
ulitin ko ah, paano hindi feeling mo abnormal? Because usually, hindi ka naman nagsasalita at saka nakipag-fellowship ng what? Two meters away? Mga Pilipino pa, mahilig tayo sa chika, gusto natin face to face. Hindi na ma, hindi, hindi na pwedeng face to face eh. Ang worst, nakamask ka, naka-face shield ka, kaya sabi ko, yun ang new normal, abnormal yun, because dati nakikita mo gumagawa nung kundi, na, kundi astronaut, yung mga nagmumotor, naka-helmet. Eh ngayon, wala nga helmet, pero nakita mo yung barrier, ang next barrier, yung distance. Well, kailangan talagang gawin yan, like I said, to prevent transmission ng COVID-19. Pero, pag inisip mo, maraming nga ni bago. Eh. This is really abnormal because this is no way for people since Pilipino tayo, marelasyon tayo. Alam mo tayo mga Pilipino, siguro ibang mga tao, no? Lalo yung mga Americans, meron sila sinasabi na personal space. Sa Pinoy, walang personal space. Ganyan tayo kalalapit mga tao. Kaya nga hirap na hirap tayo nung sinabi, pwede ba layo-layo muna kayo? Pwede ba social distancing? Pwede ba physical distancing? Pwede ba magtakip ka naman ng ano? Alam mo nung una, hirap tayo intindihin ko ano yun. Walang gusto mag-volunteer, pero kailangan. Eh nakakatuwa, sumunod tayong lahat. Likewise, sabi nga nung kahapon, the new normal, by observation, is abnormal. <laughs> Hindi birong mag-adjust. So do I bring moment of birth and not give delivery? Ito yung second statement niya. Sabi niya, maipapanganak ba ng isang araw yung bansa? Nangyari sa Israel. Nangyari rin sa atin. Pero sabi niya, yung panganganak na yon, sabi niya, ito na yung mas personal, a and personal, do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery? Pwede ba yun? May nakita ka bang bata na ipapanganak na bumanit yung bata sa loob? Hindi pwedeng mangyari yun. Hindi pwede i-close ni God yung womb kapag i-deliver niya, sabi niya. You know, there's one thing na nabanggit si Pastor June kahapon, and this is really a great statement. You know what he said? Sabi ni Pastor June Hernani, Crisis is a dangerous opportunity. What? Karami ang tao pag sinabing crisis, ah! Takot na, worried na, takbo na. Close the door. Crisis to, itago tayo. No, no, no. I was looking at that and I said to the passage yun kahapon, bro, grabe yung statement na crisis is a dangerous opportunity. Yeah, crisis is danger. But you know what? It's an opportunity. There's two ways to look at what's going on around us. Isang kwento dati. During the Korean War, no? alam niyo may North tsaka South Korea, no? nagkakagera noong 1950 to 1953, nagkakagulo doon, barilan, may isang grupo o isang plato na lang, dahil daming nang tinamaan o namatay sugatan ng mga Amerikano, sa isang lugar kung saan mas marami yung kalaban nila, they were surrounded. You know, everybody was fearful. Everybody lost, lost it. Wala na. Wala na. Sabi nila, well, we lose hope. Patay na tayong lahat. Napaligiran na tayo ng kung sino man, North Koreans or Chinese soldiers. Wala na. You know what the lieutenant did or kapitan ba yun? Sabi niya, okay, he looked at his men. A lot of them were fearful knowing na madali na lang they're all gonna be dead. He looked out. You know what he said? Men, we are surrounded on every side. To the east, to the west, to the north, and to the south. They cannot escape us anymore. <laughs> Whoa! Wow! You know what happened that day? They beat the heck out of those people who outnumbered them. All because their leader never saw that as the end. Like I said, crisis is a dangerous opportunity. Are we all in crisis? Of course. Are we all in a dangerous moment? Yes. Hindi lang sa sakit, kundi economics. Like I said, after this, magbibilangan tayo. Ano ba natira? Financially, uh, materially, resource. What is left of us? Hindi pa tayo nag-accounting. So, takot na tayo, no? If you have great faith, just like Abraham, you will not because you look at God. Sasabihin mo, Lord, you will never lead me out of the old into the new and lead me out. No way. Because you're not the kind of dad. You are not that kind of God. That I know, since long ago, umalit pa ako, I knew you, God. I know that you brought me here to be at the best. This is my moment. One moment in time. All the world 
faces this. We're all surrounded. They cannot escape us anymore. You look at this opportunity. Does it belittle you? Does it limit you? Yes. Does it scare you sometimes to think what will future be after this? Of course. Walang tao immune dun. Dalawa lang yun eh. Yung ma-immune tayo sa sakit na to, tsaka ma-immune tayo sa darating ka. And only God can assure that. Believe me. Thank God to sa dinidevelop na vaccine, tsaka medicine. But more than that, God is the greatest security. God is the greatest insurer. So sabi niya, darating ba tayo sa moment ng panganganak, mga kaibigan, itong time na to ng COVID, panganganak ko Diba sabi ko, namatay yung old world, nawala yun. 31 December 2019, tapos na yun. Kinabukasan, January 1, 2020, pinanganak na tayong lahat into a new world. This is something we can say, Lord, panahon na. Because people will say, paano natin ma-evangelize yung buong mundo? Ngayon, alam mo na. As Pastor Dave was speaking kahapon, sabi niya, medyo napadali nga mag-share. Dati, lumilipad-lipad ako. Kailangan pa rin naman, lumabas ng Pilipinas para mag-share. Ngayon, nagagamit ko na. Mag-zoom lang ako, may mga kaibigan ako sa labas. True. True. Yung mga webinar natin, I've been, we've invited a lot of people. No? From Baguio, Pangasinan, Manila, Cebu, Jensen, Sambuanga, Cagayan de Oro, anywhere in this country, even outside listening to webinars that we have. Bakit? God cannot be limited. This crisis is a dangerous opportunity. Pero pag tinignan mo, wow! Ang hirap nito, di ba? Right? Can a nation be born? Can God stop the delivery when it's about to birth something? Isipin natin to the Jews, it's painful because After what happened, diba, the first temple of Solomon burned to the ground by Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians, then rebuilt again by the Persians, and then made perfect to the time of Herod, only to be burned again by the Romans. In AD 70, General Titus, who later became the Roman emperor, burned Jerusalem to the ground. Hindi po biro yun because a lot of people died. Millions were killed. Either killed, enslaved, or exiled. Pag inisip mo to the Jews, that is really a moving moment. Nabura po yung bansa ng Judah o Israel sa mapa. After 70 AD. Na-culminate ulit yun. Alam mo ko saan? Nung World War II because nag-Holocaust. Six million people, mostly Jews, died in the hand of Nazi Germany. Yung mga Nazi, ang daming pinatay. So in both events, again, millions were either killed, enslaved, or exiled. Grabe yung nangyari. And from there, the state of modern Israel was born. 1947. The, the world saw, kawawa naman itong mga Jew. Since AD 70, they wander around the earth. Kaya may tawag na word na wandering Jew. Looking for their homeland. Finally, 1947, the modern state of Israel was born. Why? Because God told them so. I'll take you to a long journey just like I journeyed with Abraham from Ur to Canaan, just like I journeyed with Jacob from Canaan to Egypt and back in 400 years. We journeyed there. Similarly, tignan natin itong COVID situation natin. This pandemic, similarly, Like what happened to the nation of Israel in the diaspora of 70 AD, in the Holocaust of the World War II, in the birth of a nation in 1947. Tumigil ba si God? Nung ando doon na, nung ipapanganak na Israel? No, never. To this day, nakita mo ngayon ng Jewish state, andyan dyan. They're even stronger in everything. Tech, they're the richest state in that part of the Middle East. And they're also the strongest military power there. They're so small that no one among their bigger neighbor, neighbors can beat them. Because God promised to be with them. COVID-19, this pandemic, like I said, it's a worldwide reboot. Past is past. New things are here. God is building a new house. The glory of this one 
in our lives, in our time, will be greater than what it was in the past. So, I know sometimes you miss the comfort zone, but you know what? God will create something for all of us. God wants us to start thinking, Lord, if there's new things, help me govern myself. Your way, no longer my way. You know the good news? The last time the government announced that we have flattened the curve, 0.95% na lang, or 0.095%. Hindi na 1%. Yung chance ng community transmission. When I say that, we have to rejoice. Our country, even at this time, divided. Nagtitirahan yung mga tao eh. Guys, alam po yung politika minsan, mahirap i-balance eh. Pero sana po, hindi lang sa gobyerno, even yung mga kalaban ng gobyerno, matuwa tayo na grabe ang ginagawa ng Diyos eh. Are we missing this? We all should be thankful. Na kahit pa paano, naka-curb na natin yung, naka-flatter natin yung curb ng COVID-19. Elsewhere in the world, maraming din nag-iingat. Next week, pag nagkita mga tao sa England, anim-anim lang because inannounce ni Boris Johnson. Maraming area ngayon ng mundo, malalaking bansa, sa India ang taas. Number two na sila ng COVID. Nalagpas sila nila yung Brazil. Number one pa rin ang USA. Elsewhere in the world, lately, wow, sabi nga, di ba, yung mga bansang nangaapit, mapangape, wow, grabe. Yung mansa, mga bansang nananamantala ng kapwa, ayun. Hindi ka sa China, sobrang flood. Only have to look down and there's water. Sa Amerika, you only have to look up and the forest is burning. Whoa, yes. God is working. I don't know what he's, he's about to do, but he's showing us the way that our trust needs to be with him. Whoever tries to hurt people in the past, God will ultimately deal with those people in those nations. Why? Because he wanted his will in this earth. Ang totoong superpower, hindi America, hindi Russia, hindi China. Si God sa langit. Heaven is the greatest superpower there is. So let's rejoice. Pero mag-ingat tayo. When we say na curb na to at 0.0995, wala eh. Magpasalamat tayo. Mag-ingat pa rin tayo because ayaw natin ang second wave. Right? And sabi nga nila, kuha na virus, yung family ng COVID, it's still, it was here since the 1960s. I don't know anong classic immunity meron at resilient tayo mga Pilipinas. Long ago, may isang German scientific researcher, tinignan niya yung bagoong, yung bagoong na kinakain natin, kaya mga ginamos, kumunta siya ng Pangasinan, tinignan niya. Sa microscope niya, nasyak siya, millions yung bakterya lumalangoy. Sabi niya, how in the world are you able to survive by eating this? Ang sabi ng mga taga-Pangasinan sa kanya, we've been eating that for more than a thousand years. Look, yung resiliency natin, hindi naman something na pwede natin pagmalaki, no? pero thank God, Like I said, 1960 pa, yung coronavirus family, not including COVID itself, hindi pa yung COVID, is already in the Philippines. In fact, may mga infection nang kumakalat ngayon na believe me, nagko-cross over. Mag-ingat talaga tayo. At kung sinabing matibay-tibay tayo, blessing ng Diyos yun. Like I said, I was in, in Kabul in 2003, the Philippine team in Kabul, Afghanistan. We were asked by fellow foreigners na nandito. Americano, mga Briton, mga Europeans, especially mga Americans, I said, you know, we were vaccinated like 24 shots of everything different. Sabi nung taga-kabila naman na Americano, 18 daw sila. And they asked us, how about you, Philippine team? Uh, how many vaccinations do you have? We looked at them and said, what vaccination? Vaccination? Ah, us? No, we don't get anything. Ha, ah, you're crazy. Yeah, but look, We've been here longer than you, and you are sick. Almost every time, and we're not. You know why? Yung biruan namin, yung virus ng mga Pilipino, mas matapang pa sa virus ng Afghanistan. Puro pa yung virus nila doon. Mas malapit tayo. Bakit? Yung resiliency natin, guys. It's a gift. But I'm not saying pagmalaki natin. Mag-ingat tayo ng todo, hindi gustong sakit na to, wala pang lunas to. Let's turn this crisis into an opportunity. We look around us. Pag nakita mo, ano, pinaka-best example lagi, Maynila eh. Maynila is the capital 
what the mayor there is doing is something. Usually, tune in and watch paano niya inaayos dahan-dahan. Because yung capital city natin, sobrang bad down. Kaya yung mga tao, di mapagmalaki Pilipinas kasi ang samang tingnan ng Maynila. You check it out. Tingnan mo yung Maynila ngayon. Nilinis yun ang mayor. Inayos niya. You know, yung dalawang lugar doon, yung Delpan at yung um, Baseco. I mean, even police hindi pumapasok doon. Hindi walang presinto doon nun. Bakit? Mga katay ka ng mga adik doon, bagsakan yun. You look at it now, wow, ang linis. Yung mga tao, nilagyan ng parte. Manila Bay itself is clean. Well, a lot of people were debating, but may magandang beach doon? That's for them to debate. But hey, compared naman nung unang panahon na puro kalat yan, tsaka basura, let's thank God, Because kahit wala pa yung nilatag na saan dyan, bumiinis eh. Okay? Our present government made sure inaayos yan. Let's be thankful. Wala tayong sisihan. Whatever the past governments in this country done, okay, tapos na yun eh. What ang mahalaga ngayon? Because a lot of people will just do tit and tat for that. Guys, we're only one country. Okay? Ang ano ko lang is, guys, magtulungan ta. Huwag nating politically... Huwag natin gawin politika lahat. Alam ko masyado mga politika Pilipino, magtulungan tayo. It's time to come together because we cannot just trust people. Right? The last time magtiwala tayo sa mga kampi natin, iniwan tayo, kaya naagaw ng kabilang bansa yung mga isla natin. O ngayon, paano yan? So, balance na. Balance. Ako, pasalamat ako sa mga gu- sa gobyerno ngayon, magaling sumayaw. Alam, balance yan na. So, ulitin ko lang, let's turn, so, let, let's make this, let's turn this opportunity of this time of pandemic. This is an opportunity. Huwag nating sayangin. There's one great man, I forgot his name, but you know what he said? Tough times don't last. Tough people do. Wow. Tough times don't last. COVID-19, like I said, it's waning. Because kahit pa paano yung, yung virus kasi nag-mutate yan. Yung iba, yung mutation tumatapang but for most, humihina. Like I said, nung Spanish flu, after World War One, hindi naman lahat ng tao nabakunahan. May mga lola ko. Nanay ko, di man nabakunahan. E ba't hanggang ngayon, buhay kaming lahat. 91 na nanay ko. Mga lolo't lola niyo, nabakunahan? Hindi. Because nag-adapt yung human body, ganun katindi ang Diyos na kinreate yung katawan natin para labanan lahat ng virus. It will take time. But believe me, tough times don't last. Tough people do. And in this time of challenge, ang tanong ko, how tough are you? Pag sinay mo, ah, I'm a tough guy. Yeah, but how tough are you? I'm a tough person. Yeah, thank God. But how tough are you? Because tough times will not just be after may makitang vaccine. After that, pag nag-accounting yung buong mundo, maraming malulungkot. Marami na nawala ng trabaho. Pero would you look at it that way or would you look at it as an opportunity? Marami na po ngayon mga Pilipino na tutong mag-business. Yung hindi marunong. Yung, I mean, they turn a lot of things They don't know, na discover nila sa sarili nila, meron silang talento. Kaya nga sabi dati ng isang kaibigan ko, pag may nakita kang baso, no? imagine, may hawak akong glass. For example, glass to. There's two ways to look at the glass. No? Yung mga negative tumingin, pag kalahati yung tubig ng glass, sasabihin nila, well, that's half empty. Pero pag nakatingin ka kay God, sabihin, well, that's half full. Yung nagsabi ng half empty, nakatingin from the ilalim. Warm view. Di ba ang uod nakatingin? So, yung verse eye view kakaiba eh. Hindi, half full. Bakit? Konti na lang puno na eh. Dapat ganun tayo tumingin. If you're a tough person, in this tough times, let's see everything that way. Lord, it's not half empty though a lot of people would reason. It's half empty. Let's reason from the opposite. Let's make this crisis a dangerous opportunity for God to work in our lives. Wow. Lord, it's half food. Kalahati na lang puno na eh. Punin mo na. Siksik liglig, umaapaw. Fill your cup of blessing. 
because out of those people who never really trust you, that half cup which they said are empty, you'll fill it with judgment. Bakit? Eh, ayaw maniwala eh. Lord, turuan mo kami magtuwa. While I go back to the title, Inside Out, you know what the COVID pandemic did to us? It brought out what's inside. Kung ano yung nasa loob, lumabas. Yung mabuti, lumabas. Yung masama, lumabas din. Pero un- ulitin ko, alam bakit Inside Out? Gusto ko linisin agad yung loob. Sabi niya, pag naghugas ka, huwag mo hugasan yung labas. Hugasan mo yung loob. Yan ang sabi ni Jesus mga Pharisee. Pharisee, you hold the cup, you clean the outside, but not the inside. Clean the inside. Inside out. Huwag ka lang puro panglabas lang. Like I said, di ba? Before I end this message, new wine skin, new wine. Old wine skin, old wine. Hindi yung pwede pagpalitin. Right? New normal is new normal. Hindi pwedeng old normal, nilagyan mo ng bagong packaging, ay new normal. Hindi, old yun. Old pa rin yun. Kasi kung ano yung nasa loob, inside out, yun naman talaga yung totoo. Eh. I hope these times really change us. The way we look at God personally, the way we look at our family, the way we look at our neighbors, the way we look at our nation. God and government. Inside out. Finally, I read you a verse. God sets the lonely in families. That's Psalm 66, verse 6, A. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing. But I balik do. When God called Abraham, he was planning to start a family. When God created Adam and Eve thousands of years before Abraham, he was planning to start his own family on the earth. God sets the lonely in families. In these times of testings, a lot of people are depressed and lonely and lost. Church, can we really say we are a family? The church is not a building. The church is a family. One big giant family. I want to encourage you to reach out. Use technology, phone. Use the internet. Use every platform you can to reach out, to encourage, to talk. Do not let all this quarantine set you apart from people. And when you find people needing help, please help them out. I really honor people sa church na talagang grabing gumalaw, no? na nagtutulungan, like yung may nasunugan sa adlaw. If you have anything there, damit, mga gamit na yun yung ginagamit, we're doing something. Gusto nating tulungan itong mga taong to kasi napakahirap mawalan, masunugan, mawalan ng bahay, mawalan ng gamit sa gitna ng pandemic. Church, let's help people. Because if there's anything tangible, na observable about the people of God, it's not just when we pray in power, but when we act and demonstrate that love here in the physical world. So, kung may mga ganon, I encourage you. Let's help people. Okay? Let's help people. There are people in us, sila Nol, sila Clay, who's doing that. You can contact us or contact them. Let's help because mahirap tingnan na nahihirapan na yung mga kasamahan natin, mga kababayan natin na naghihirap na nga sa buhay, na wala na. Let's demonstrate first, inside out. Let's let the world see what's inside. And what's inside should be seen. Because this new time, in this new world, what God is doing is this. Nilabas niya kung ano yung nasa loob niya. So kung hindi maganda yun, hayaan mong baguhin ni God yun. Hayaan mong magbago yun para gumanda. Kung maganda yun, edi lalo mong ipakita. Not for you, but to honor God. Amen? Alam ko mahal natin si God. When I ask you guys, you are the kind of people that love God so much. That show that love. Like I always said, yung mantra na ang bera ka, simplified, love God. 
love people. Let's love with words. Let's love with action. Shall we pray then? Father, thank you. You are God. And you've given us that power deep inside of us to learn first to govern our lives so that we'll be able to help out others within our homes, our communities, our cities, our country. Lord, let the inside come out. If there are things in our heart that needs to be dealt with, Lord, I pray even now if you're there and if you have things in your heart, you would really honestly say, Lord, I'm struggling with this thing and I knew you're not pleased with it. It hurt me and more than that, it hurts your heart. Forgive me. Lord, I pray for all of us, for your people. Cleanse us today. Lord, from the inside out, Lord, cleanse us from within so that we could be vessels pure, holy, that can be used by you. Lord, use us in this world. Use us to speak life to people. Lord, use us, these hands, these feet, to reach out and help. In whatever way we can, allow us, Lord, because, Lord, you said that when we give, we will receive even more. Teach us to honor you not only with our finances, but our resources. Not only by giving our best to you, but also giving to those in need. Lord, teach us. We're one big community. We're one big city here in Davao. But Lord, your hands are not limited because we are your legs. We are your hands. Teach us to reach out to mga kaibigan, kababayan namin, even people we don't know yet from this day na nangangailangan. Yung mga nasunugan, yung ibang nababahaan. Lord, tulungan mo ka. Kami yung mga kamay sa kapaan. Let your people be blessed because we are blessed to bless others. Teach us to affirm one another. But teach us to have big, great, strong arms to embrace one another in need, especially in helping. Father, thank you so much. We give you our heart. We thank you for forgiving us. We thank you for cleansing us. We thank you for letting us start again. And if you're here, you've never really given your heart to Jesus. Let me lead you into this prayer. Father, thank you so much. I know I sin against you all my life. I ask, oh God, that you receive me. Make me one of your own. Make me your child. Lord, I receive your perfect sacrifice on the cross. I receive, Lord God, your words of forgiveness. Lord, forgive me my sin. Cleanse me. Refresh me. You're the lifter of my head. Make me one of your children. Welcome me into your home, into your family. Lord, thank you so much. May you bless your people today. Allow us to change, starting from the inside, growing up. Because, Lord, you called us to be your blessing. We are the tangible, observable, physical manifestation of your love and care to everyone. Because, Lord, like you said, you set the lonely in families, and you will lead prisoners with singing. We are your church. We will help people because we love people, because we love you first. We give you praise, allow your church, mobilize us this week so that your greatness, your kingdom, your person will be known by everyone. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for joining this morning. Like I always said, stay firm. Stay strong. Stay safe. God bless you. Thank you.